Welcome to Critical Hit, a major spoilers podcast. Thank you so much for downloading and checking us out this week. And I know you're all sitting there on the edge of your seat screaming. You've been screaming into the void. Well, maybe not the void. You've been screaming into the darkness for a whole week now. Just only a week? Yeah, for for some of us, we've been screaming for a month. That's why Rob's (laughs) voice is really hoarse. Yep. Uh, (laughs) I've been spending each evening just lying in the shower, rocking and crying for 11 hours. So it's fine. (laughs) Mm, 11 hour showers yeah, I went to Belize and chilled out for two weeks <laughs> she had to great. leave the country yeah some of us had better months than others yes hmm. uh, so I guess is this the end Rodrigo is this the is My this the end friend. of our show this is the I end. mean we just hit yes. 500 episodes uh, and now you we hit that that legendary TPK or potential TPK and I I I am very curious, along with, I'm sure, the listeners now screaming, would you just get on with it? <laughs> Please, Rodrigo, so, tell us what Take happens. it away, Dr. Will. <laughs> 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 so let's talk about what happens in the event of character. <laughs> yes, we're going to spend this week talking about that and uh, the joys of uh, killing your entire party. Mm. I'm not dead. I'm Ket's new familiar. <laughs> yeah, I would say, Ket's not dead. He's got a new familiar. <laughs> Uh, We're doing fine, guys. I don't think yeah, a surprisingly dead. small amount of you are actually dead, and yeah. really, it's just half of one of you. <laughs> right, and you know mm. that that yeah, predates. Okay. Let's the... be honest. We're, we're epic level characters. Killing mm. us would be anti- minor like, inconvenience. Productive. You yeah. have to uh, find other ways to lock us down. Mm. That is exactly right. So. Uh, yes. Last time... On uh, Critical uh, Hit. hit, hit. On Critical Hit. Uh, a master plan was, uh, put in the works, and our heroes, uh, suddenly found themselves, uh... Crushed in uh, heart and soul. I, I, I was gonna say slightly put out, but yes, I think that might have been an understatement. (laughs) Um, so, uh, let's, let's just, let's just put that out of our minds here for, (laughs) for a second. Okay. Everybody, everybody just relax. (sighs) Take a deep breath. Um, And, and, uh, picture the, picture the following. Okay. Think about the astral sea, the liquid for miles and miles in every direction reflecting the stars above except now it's a lot more difficult only the brighter only the brightest stars shine through as there is a red haze uh, in the celestial, covering the celestial vault. Uh, clearly, something has happened that uh, is making it very difficult for things to shine through. This also kind of gives the astral sea itself a reddish hue, although it's all—it's so dark that it really only comes through in like the crests of its uh, of the uh, undulations. So, imagine a. Uh, a leaf, a golden leaf, uh, like you would find in uh, one of those, uh, in, in the sort of tree that changes its its foliage uh, in the fall. Deciduous. Uh, yes, a deciduous tree. Um, imagine this leaf floating gently towards the astral sea, then falling upon its surface and disintegrating in a with a small pop. Uh, then imagine that happening to two more leaves. Then five, then 10, then 20, then 50, then 100, then 1,000, then 2,000, until we see uh, kind of where these leaves are coming from, which is an enormous mostly spherical storm of gold and red and yellow leaves. Um, if you, if you're familiar with what a bait ball looks like, that's kind of what these leaves are doing, um, right above the surface of the astral sea. Um, and out of this 
huge uh, storm of leaves. Uh, something uh, protrudes out of it. It is a long piece of wood, uh, which you can eventually see is the front of a ship. Um, as a ship pulls out of this conflagration, it stops swirling. Basically, all the leaves suddenly regain their natural directional leafiness and begin to gently cascade onto the astral sea, popping as they hit the surface. Some of them fall onto the deck of the ship, um, but basically they are blown around uh, no longer without any, you know, with, with any sort of like mystical motivation. This ship is an actual boat type ship. Uh, it is a galleon style ship. Um, it is made of a light rosy wood. Um, its sails are a rich golden color. Um, and in its wake, uh, it, it leaves a sparkly rainbow sheen. That is to say, a m sort of multicolored wake, as opposed to like, you know, one streak of purple and one streak of blue and one streak of red. It's, not, oh, okay. it's just kind of general sparkly multicolored magic in its wake um the wake doesn't last very long it's just you know kind of trails you know maybe uh 50 yards behind the ship and to the sides who would be um who would be at the helm the captain of the ship <laughs> Well, at I, the very least, the helps the helmsman. You would hope. Yes. Yes. Probably not at the helm. I would be probably at the bow of the ship. Okay. I think Matthew you know, might. Ma Matthew probably would be. I, I I I think I agree. I think I would be at the helm. Okay. Uh so why don't you go ahead and describe this uh, helmsman for us? The, all right. This helmsman is long and lean. In a strangely evil way, and yet somehow not. Uh, definitely Fay. Um, you know how sometimes when you look at Orem's eyes, they look blue, and sometimes they look green. Mm -hmm. When you look at his skin, sometimes it looks blue, and other times it looks blue because it's blue. <laughs> a deep, deep indigo blue that has kind of a darkness and a shadow to it that almost makes it look like he's always in shadow, uh, close cropped hair and a perfectly quaffed Van Dyke mustache with curls at the end of each one that never, ever seems to need to be waxed. And yet somehow perfectly holds its shape every single day. How and why is a mystery. Uh, um, what, what color, uh, hair and facial hair? Silver. Okay. And also big reflective silver eyes. Okay. Garb? Uh, mostly black, roby looking things with little bits that look like they might be armored or padded. Mm -hmm. uh, sort of a cloth and leather ensemble. And uh, over kind of across his back and shoulder, not like Captain America style, but you know, worn in a way that it could be immediately accessed is a large, uh, spiked shield with very metally looking chains metal, metally in the fact that they look like they're made of metal. And they're also like totally metal, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, hanging from them, uh, ready to be used at any given moment. Let's see what else. Uh, uh well, while we're here, ear pointage, uh, yes, <laughs> pointage. degree, degree of ear pointage. 73 uh it's not like yeah yeah not like crazy pointy um we're gonna go i'm gonna go um and i have to do this in in reference you know to my cultural touchstones i'm gonna go with first pilot spock pointy um okay. from, so from the cage but not the menagerie <laughs> and three nerds out there just went yeah so yes pointy ears but not like huge wide pointy ears more of a pointy almost vaguely uh demonic devilly looking uh historical point 
Right. So solidly pointy, but not like cur yes. like curling into itself pointy. Right, and not like the big the big wide kind of ears that you see on like you know Dobby the house elf, which right. occasionally will pop up. Okay. Any other uh, relevant traits? Hmm. Not. I don't want to say constantly looking over his shoulder, but definitely the type of person who seems to be scanning not just the horizon, but looking around, and making sure of the position of the ship and the people on the ship and anything near the ship. The general demeanor of not wanting to be in any way surprised and having huge silver eyes that allow him to kind of look around and keep looking around and never blink, and it's really kind of eerie. All right. Um, and yes, I will go ahead and clarify uh, for our D and D friends that it this character is in fact a drow. Yes, very much um, a drow. So did I hear somebody was at at the bow? Yes. So question. Yes. And I may have to edit this out. Have we just arrived at the astral sea? You have just arrived. Okay. You just. Pulled out of a big conflagration of leaves onto the astral sea. Okay, all right. Uh, standing at the uh, the bow of the ship, we can do. Uh, we see from from the uh, drow's point of view, we see a lone figure. Uh, he is uh, completely bald on the top of his head, but uh, as he turns, we see that he has a big scraggly beard that looks like it's really unkempt. It's kind of out in all directions. It's not been combed. Um, it's just it's been about a it's been about a year or so since uh, since maybe this thing has even been washed. Uh, as we continue down, we see uh, some familiar looking robes of a monk, but again, kind of stained in places. Like there's like food stains. Like somebody who just wiped their hands. Some greasy chicken onto their onto their robe and didn't really give uh, too much attention to it. And um, the figure turns around and takes a swig from a, a kind of a gore Wine skin. Yeah, that's that's wrapped around his wrapped around his neck. And you can tell he may be slightly intoxicated, but he may be slightly intoxicated all the time, so there's just kind of a numbness to him. And oh, he, yeah, drunken master. Yeah. <laughs> and he turns around and says, well, we've made it. Uh, skin color? Uh, white. Okay. Beard color? Oh, well, brown, greasy. <laughs> uh, but there may be some, there may be quite a few uh, strands of white in it because uh, the stress of the last couple of years have taken its toll. And we all know that. Stress will cause hair to turn white. Also, poor nutrition and excess alcohol. So, uh, sure. yes, you can put some some big streaky white strands in that beard. Now, it's not a beard that goes like down to his gut or anything like that. This is a this is a thing that's like oh, I don't know, down to like his collarbone. So, if you kind of drew like a half circle from his ears all the way down to his uh, his breastplate, the top of the bottom of his neck, that's kind of how that beard is shaped, and it's just stringy and all over the place. Okay. Um, obvious weapons? None that you can see. All right. I mean, so... he's got two weapons in the form of one of them holding this this uh, flask, uh, this <laughs> gourd that he's drinking from, and the other one just kind of leaning on the on the uh, edge of the deck. Okay. Uh, so yes, this uh, person uh, who is human, he's a human, mm -hmm. uh, says that uh, you've made it. Uh, who comes out to see whether you've made it? I think uh, I would come out. Okay. Oh, boy, we're back here. Yes, and indeed. Stepping out from uh, the uh, under... Below decks. Below decks, there you go. <laughs> Is a stout, broad, sturdy individual... Uh, Long, uh, white hair, although pretty much entirely bald up top, uh, intricately braided hair and beard, all pretty long, pretty much down to his knees. Uh, skin is, uh, 
dark and scarred and pockmarked. He's uh, wearing chainmail and has a sheathed long sword and shield strapped across his back. And he steps up to the bow. Is So, how long before landfall? I peer out. No idea. I have even no idea where we're at. We're here, aren't we? Isn't that all that matters at this point? No signs of a column? None that I can see. I peer out. Do I see anything? Because there's... Did you say there's like a red haze all over the place? Yeah, so the red haze is not like... You're not like... Uh, it, it's not like you're sailing through a mist. Mm-hmm. Um, it is just... A, it's like if the sky was overcast, except it's red, mm. right? It's like it's hard to see anything past it, so it's hard to navigate uh, from the stars. Okay. So uh, now that you guys are out, who let's let's have the last member of the uh, at least the last humanoid member of the crew come out. All right. Uh, a uh, youngish Eldrin steps out, looking curious, ready to see this new world he is stepping into uh, his long, long red hair is uh, tied back. The, he blinks a couple of times as he adjusts to the light with dark green pupilless eyes, a uh, shade of emeralds uh, steps up. Uh, obvious weapons carries a uh, long sword at his side. Nothing fancy, uh, but clearly immaculate craftsmanship as it is made by the Eldrin. Dark blue robes uh, across most of his steps up. uh, So you're not certain where we're at? I take a step away from him just slightly. Mm, No, but I'm sure we will be able to find out soon. Yeah. So we'll just have to keep going until we find some landmarks. Is there any way for the helmsman to have any idea as to how far it might be to land? Being at the helm and all? Um, you can spot way or, or a ways in the distance that there is land. Really, the, uh, the, the conditions are, are not great for visibility, but um, you can see that there's actually other ships uh, in the distance heading in that direction. There, on the horizon. We all look. <laughs> Squint out, put my hand over my eyes. I jump uh, up I jump up nimbly onto the very edge of the, you know, on the railing of the bow and mm-hmm. peer out. Yes, I see. Hmm. I'd say it's no more than an hour or two away. Perhaps. Suppose we should make ourselves ready. We don't know what kind of reception we may get. Yes, especially after the last times. Yeah. Hmm. Anyone seen the pup? Below decks, I had assumed. I haven't seen her in a little while. Uh, I whistle loudly. When, uh, as you guys hear that whistle uh, from behind you, you guys hear, Ow, not so loud. (laughs) And there, uh, standing behind you, is a... Uh, gray, silvery fox. Uh, she's got one dark eye and one light, silvery eye, and uh, apparently she can talk. <laughs> <sighs> Be on your guard. Land ahead. Boats ahead. Why do I have to guard? You guard it. <laughs> <laughs> All of us in general are uh, going to be on our guard. Oh, drumstick, you're so funny. But seriously, it's time to focus. I can focus. Okay, please do. She uh, starts uh, walking around the edge of the ship, looking kind of nervous, like something might jump out at any second. (laughs) At least for, you know, a solid minute, and then she gets bored and goes below decks again. (laughs) Have any Uh, or all of us been to the Astral Sea before? Oh, yes. Uh, not uh, all of you. One of you hasn't. Hi. At least two of us have. So I have. Yes, you have. All right. Hmm. Uh, so you guys uh, travel for a while, and eventually 
uh, arrive at an island. As you get closer, you see other ships. Of course, these are astral ships. They're, you know, very blocky and either made of stone or metal. Uh, and there's definitely a few times where, you know, a ship will be pulling out or um, just moving slower than than you guys. And uh, as you kind of sail by, there there are definite stairs as uh, any number of sailors seem very surprised at the fact that your ship is not exploding into chunks um, mm-hmm. from the Astral Sea. Uh, there's there's definitely at least one of those like cigarette rolls. You know what I'm talking about? Like there's like a guy with like a like a rolled up like cigarette in his mouth, mm-hmm. and you guys go by, oh. and it kind of rolls to the edge of his mouth <laughs> as he like as he like follows you with his eyes. <laughs> uh, and you guys arrive at a docks which seems to be public um i will say that as you guys pull in you see that uh the clientele here looks pretty rough these aren't like battleships but everyone you've seen looks like uh you know they've uh it's like take take your pick between like scars or like uh you know, noses that have uh, been busted up and healed or, uh, you know, like downright like guys with like hooks for hands, not both hands, maybe just one hand, both hands and a foot. Yes. Hook for a foot. Hook for a foot. foot. Pegs for a hand. Does it seem to, does there seem to be a place where we can just pull up and begin? Uh, There, there does. And there's a a dock attendant there uh, who looks like very, like it's just kind of staring at you guys and then kind of snaps out of it and waves you in. All right. I'll pull um, up to where he waves. Th- your ship is a lot lower in profile than even the next lowest ship. Um, most like all, uh, all astral ships are very tall and they basically ride right on top of the astral sea. Your ship is actually behaving like a regular ship. So a good, you know, lower, you know, quarter to a third of it is under the astral sea but doesn't seem to be having any problems so you know when you get to the part where the dogs are you are like below it so uh, as you pull up you see the guy desperately trying to find a gangplank that's going to work for this because he really wasn't expecting it Uh, this guy looks older he's maybe We'll say probably looks like he's in his 50s. Might be younger, but looks like he's in his 50s. He's got uh, salt and pepper hair kind of in a top knot and uh, a beard. And is dressed, you know, he's got some armor on, uh, but it's just like a like a breastplate. And then is just wearing like regular, you know, tunic and, and pants underneath. And uh, as you guys uh, pull up all the way, uh, the anchor drops, and uh, he lowers a. Uh, he finds a, a, an appropriate gangplank and finds a way to secure it uh, for you guys to walk up. And it uh, it's kind of a kind of a slope. Where are we? Y- you don't know where you are. No. Uh, this is Lion Fang Island, young man. Lion Fang Island. Mm. Does that ring a bell for any of us? Uh, it might. Uh, you guys can give me a either a history check, no, or, or or I guess you can try and convince me of of some other thing. But history would probably be best here. Which 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 god does this belong to, Albrecht? Albrecht, yes, Albrecht knows that that's not, yeah. I mean, yeah, would uh, religion? Yeah. Uh, no. No. But Albrecht knows that this is not like a godly island. This is just an island. No, this isn't uh, under any particular deity's domain. Oh. I rolled a 32. That's pretty good. Uh, I rolled a See? 27. Uh, well, we'll call a 32 good enough. Okay. Um, well, yeah. <laughs> 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that does ring a bell. Uh, you would imagine, like, you can kind of place it uh, in the astral sea and can more or less guess uh, where some of the major godly islands are, assuming that there haven't been any really radical time jumps uh, where you were before and they haven't, you know, honestly, you guys really need to get off and like figure out like you, you guys need some charts and you guys need to ask around because Mm -hmm. clearly stuff has happened. And also you guys don't know exactly how long you were gone because of, you know, timey wimey Mm -hmm. fey nonsense. Yes. Yes. So you guys definitely need to like figure, like find somebody who's going to like a cartographer, an astro cartographer or just some sailors and try to figure some stuff out. Mm. Lion Fang Island, yes. Ah, it's coming back to me now. Uh, uh, yes. I know of a general area that we're at, but um, we need maps. Yeah. Yeah, I think we need uh, maps and to decide where we go from here. Plus, we need to find a bar. Well, we got plenty of bars here. Good. <laughs> Why don't you... Uh... Why don't you go ahead and finish? Uh, ah, do we even have ropes for? Let me get you some ropes, uh, so you can secure this ship. Yeah, and uh, and and then uh, then we can discuss price for docking. Mm. Wouldn't want it wandering of off. Do yes. We have any money? <laughs> yes. Uh, you guys do have some money. Yes. I reach into my ropes and I have plenty of money to pay. The guy comes back. And uh, you guys do your best securing the ship. You're not like you guys aren't too probably too worried about it because, you know, it's unlikely that this ship's going to float away. But uh, the dogs guy seems very tense about it because mm. mm. he's heard of these wooden ships. Mm. Zanam. <laughs> Whatever. Ow. Make sure we don't forget where we park and make sure that we don't have to chase the ship down again like we did last time. Agreed. I don't think it's going to leave us again. Mm. I turn to the docks master. Hmm. Allow no one on the ship. Allow no one off the ship. What is Uh, your price? Well, uh, normally it would be uh, I I guess it's depends on how long you'll be docking it would be one gold a day but uh i'd be willing to knock it down to four silver i toss him four silver (laughs) okay uh so just one day then we'll be back before the end of the day if not i throw him another dozen dozen coin Uh, all right all right and they all, you know, of course, you they like all throw they them all a fly. dozen like just, coins. <laughs> yeah, just a dozen. But see, the thing is, There's some copper, some gold. You don't no, know. no, it's all silver. But don't <laughs> worry, I throw them in such a way, in, with my with my uh, with my skill that they just kind of all fly out in a single line. And as he holds his hand out, they all fall and stack perfectly into his hand. <laughs> I see. I th- I thought that maybe like it was the opposite expectation <laughs> that because if somebody <laughs> scattered threw- shot. Yeah, if somebody threw twelve silver at at you, you'd be able to catch it with like just pluck it out of the air without any problems, and you're just like, here you go, anybody can do this. Yeah, no, <laughs> they, right, I we'll, kind of we'll just under the, it's yeah. like an underhand, like a not a softball toss, but you know, like when you the uh, top of your palm up, flinging it out, and they just all fly up in this beautiful silver arc and land perfectly into the dock master's hand. Do not play quarters with this elf or human, whomever he is. Human. He's human. I'm aware. Uh, okay, all right. Uh well, uh who should I uh who should I put down as the captain in case anything comes up? Zamanaman here. Zana. Uh, all right. Uh, uh how do you spell that? Z N M. Oh, that's a that's a fun name. 
Uh, all right, uh, I'll, I'll go log this in. Uh, welcome to uh, welcome to Lion Fang Island. Thank you. We are delighted to be here. Mm. Um, do you have any cartographers nearby? Cartographers? I don't know about that, but uh, I would urge you to just head for the tavern. You <laughs> should be able <laughs> to find idea. everybody you need to find, uh, or at least get directions from there. <laughs> Great. Come along. I whistle one more time. Okay. Drumstick. Hi. Well, are you staying or coming? Well, the gourds are being weird, so maybe I should stay. You see. Are we going to be good to keep them there? I tense up just so you can see there's some visible, visible tension. Perhaps you should stay. You should stay. I, and there's like a them. moment of like sobriety just passes over his face. Well, they're being like extra weird. So maybe you guys should like pet them or something. Uh, I think they'll be okay. All right. Should be Don't back. say I didn't warn you. We should be back shortly. I mean, we don't want to take them with us, do we? You don't. You probably don't want to take them with you. Right. Okay. But, mm-hmm. you know, if they're being weird, you might want to check on them before you leave. All right. Yeah. Then we'll we'll go down to the lower decks and check on them. We will okay. check. Uh, all right. So you guys head down. And uh, he- here's the thing about drumstick that you found. It's it's very rarely in the middle with her. She tends to either really understate things or overstate mm. things. Mm, great. And man, did she understate this? Mm. Like oh. as you as you guys walk into the trophy room, the so I'll, I'll describe this. So you guys walk into the trophy trophy room. It is a um, it's not a terribly big room, but there are four pillars, uh, each of which has a vegetable sitting on it. One of them has a small uh, yellow-orange pumpkin with a very long stem. Uh, another one has kind of a green sort of like figure eight shaped gourd. It's green, uh, sort of like a like the, the type of gourd they use for a drinking gourd, except, you know, it, those are like dry. So this is like an actual alive one. There's another one. Uh, that is green with white stripes. It's got kind of a kind of a wide base and a shorter top. It, like uh, if if you guys know what a fairy squash is, you can look it up. And then there is one that looks kind of like uh, if you think of sort of a softball sized, uh, somewhat oblong. Uh, kind of fruit looking thing. It's uh, orange to like the top of it is orange the bottom of it is green and uh kind of at a gra- as a, as a gradient right so it's like it starts out kind of yellow orange and and then goes to a, a bright kind of lime green uh, and it's covered in little spikes so that that would be kind of what these things would normally look like right now what they actually look like is very weird warped versions of that and uh, if you if you guys know what kind of a, an American uh, or uh, presumably European uh, jack o' lantern looks like, they're all kind of doing that. Like mouths and eyes appear out of them, and they're kind of like wailing or kind of singing, and they're just like kind of going crazy, just being super loud. Um, you guys feel like weird energies fluctuating, and as you approach, you see that these things are, you know, not not necessarily in the corner, but they're kept somewhat far apart. Um, and right at the center of where all of these things are held, there is an animal, uh, which looks like a rat. As this happens and as these things kind of go nuts and really before you guys can jump in and do anything the rat begins to grow uh, until it eventually becomes an almost humanoid sized rat at which point it sprouts feathers and some of its fur turns into feathers grows a beak and then it's like a bird person I'm just like Uh, in a fighting stance like I don't know what's going on but I'm ready to punch something uh, the gourds calm down. 
Who are you and how did you get on this vessel? Uh, let's get a description first. So I'm naked, right? Yep. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> oh. um, so, okay, people have been wondering. I'm, I'm just saying. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, so, uh, yeah, I guess standing in front of you is a Kenku. Um, she has uh, green and black feathers, like, all basically over her uh chest like kind of starting at like where the collarbone would be at a person and like going down to like the tops of her thighs and then retreating from there uh to uh long kind of uh spindly uh bird legs and uh claw uh feet with long toes and uh that kind of end in like sharp black nails and her uh, fingers are do the same, starting from the uh, like the shoulders is where it turns from feathers to uh, kind of scaly skin into uh, claws. She's got um, a long uh, green beak, uh, blue eyes, and uh, probably the, all the feathers are. Uh, a mess <laughs> uh just like totally askew in every direction um and, like green and uh black feathers all over the place and she as you guys like realizes where she is uh puts her hands up uh Little then sparkle? she huh wait is that the, you? someone says sparkle yep who uh, uh you know this uh, being what yeah yeah, she helped save the Cerulean Keep, and then Orem left with her. Uh, wait, you know this oh, creature? Wait, you're you know Orem? Yeah, he he taught me how to use this gesture at the sword. Oh, you're you're one of his sword mages? Yeah. <sighs> uh, Tell her oh. your name and see if she's even heard of you. <laughs> I'm I'm Dolan Green Valley. You heard of this one? Ah, uh, I can't. I can't say I do. I'm sorry. Told you. Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't suppose you have any clues or know what day it is oh, or where oh, we I, are. Here, I uh, I offer her my black cloak. Oh, thank you. She like wraps it around herself. Which actually, you know. Reveals that I'm wearing uh, kind of a male armor beneath bits and pieces of things and stuff. So, <sighs> your, so your, your armor is, is made sparkle? up of your armor is made up of bits and things, or is it you've got other things on top of your armor? There are bits and things on top of the armor. Ah, okay, all right. But there's definitely armor in there. Okay, cool. That's I just wanted to make sure it wasn't like, like a patchwork. Yeah. I was making yes. sure it wasn't some patchwork uh, armor. No, right. it's actually designed to have the chainmail armor without being, you know, visibly chainmail. Cool. Yeah. You can you can call me a little sparkle. I can't believe that worked. Again, who are you? Uh, that is an extremely long story. Um uh She's a hero. She's a bird. <laughs> and what, <laughs> You're talking what can you not believe fox. worked? Sorry, what? What can you not believe worked? Oh, uh, I've been a rat for a long time. I, I don't know exactly down? how long. Uh, sorry, pardon me. And so she just like thinks and she's like, can you guys still hear me? Yes. yes. It worked. What? Uh, Congratulations. Worked. Now maybe we can talk about something else. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I look at, uh, I look at Albrecht. What, what is she talking about? Can we hear, I we can't. I, I'm taking it. We can't hear this, right? Okay. Uh, you can hear her side of yes, it. Yes. Okay. That's she, what I thought. Yeah. That's what I thought. She hasn't quite worked out how to do it completely mentally. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. And so again, okay. to Albrecht, do you know what she's talking about? Can't say I do. Um, have you had any contact with Orem? Why? Why are you here? Uh, the last time I had contact with Orem Rivendorn was during the last incursion, <laughs> yeah. the last big battle. Uh, big uh, battle. Of what? Uh, like when the the you guys were fighting the what's it the the Fey when the, like Torque got take, no, taken away. No, the when Celestial the, Crusade. The Celestial Crusade. Yeah. Okay. Cool. The last time I saw Orem was during the uh, the big meeting. 
Which meeting? The uh, the one with the gods, or yes, here the one in the astral sea What's with Arathis and Coralon storming away. I did see him at Bahamut's funeral as well. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So why? Okay. So so. Okay. Uh, do you know what what day it is? No, we just kind of got here ourselves and have okay. yet to get uh, our bearings. So, so were, did you come here to rescue Orum? Uh, I don't. He's needing rescued. <laughs> oh, does talking he? Talking crazy. Uh, all right. So why why are you here? What's the state of the war? Has time broken down yet? Uh, again, we just kind of got shoulders. here. Yeah. Okay, so you you're coming here from the Feywild. Yeah. 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 Okay, and why did you come here? We are on a holy mission, I suppose. Bahamut's last we? request. Oh. We're in the room with the gourds, aren't we? Yeah. Oh, yep. you're you're in league with we... Bahamut. Okay. Uh, and what was what was his last request? Those. Yeah, no, I I yeah. believe that. I I think we should maybe sit down. Yes, let's. Yeah, this yeah, bird is good. making me nervous. <laughs> oh, Indeed. yeah. Sorry, I haven't got, um, been able to talk to people in a while. Um, do you have anything to eat? I also haven't been able to uh, eat anything that wasn't scraps in a while, and I'm extremely hungry. Uh, and I don't know, maybe something to. Oh, sorry. Um, priorities, I guess. Um, also a dagger. I don't know, some other armor. I, I'm sorry, I lost everything. Um, uh, but. Uh, I, I guess we should know what Bahamut's last request is because I've got some thoughts. Okay. So, uh, I, but yes, let's... sitting down, food, water, maybe off the boat. I don't know. Where are we? I, let's go to the galley, I suppose. Well, we got food. We'll we'll see what it is. Hmm. So we'll lead her out, kind of probably in between the four of us in a kind of a marching order, two in front, <laughs> two in back, and yes. kind of lead her to the to the galley. I mean, we. I don't. I mean, I don't know who this is. Yeah. Nor do I. We can trust her. Yeah. So it's an Eldrin, a drow, and a human? Yes. And, and, a, and a dwarf. And a dwarf. And a dwarf. Yep. And a okay. dwarf. Does the dwarf have, like, anyone have a, uh, does the dwarf have, like, a vomit symbol? No. Nope. Okay. <laughs> dwarf is lacking in holy symbols. Cute. Cool. Um, all right. So you guys uh, get to the galley. When you arrive at the galley, There are five plates set. Looks like it's stew and dumplings today. Mm -hmm. Uh, It stopped giving us potatoes, guys. Not potatoes, yeah. Well, I don't see your complaint about potatoes. They're perfectly nutritious. (laughs) (laughs) And they make good good alcohol. Sits down and just like immediately starts shuffling food in her beak. Yeah. Mm Mm-mm, fish stew. (laughs) <laughs> oh, that's so much better than anything I've had in I don't know how long. Why don't you start yeah. at the beginning? Me? I think her mouth might be full. Yes. Oh. <clears throat> Sorry. Um. Uh. Well, I, I, I should probably let you tell me about Bahamut's last request first, because I guess I should probably understand if we're friends or not. Well, uh... Seven. The day before Bahamut died, he called to me and gave me a mission. Travel to the Feywild, gather the four Order Eater gourds, then when the Dark Pillars appear, bring the gourds to their presence. That's it? That was his request. That was his task. (laughs) And it just happened to be where I am. That's... Uh, he bailed me out. All right. Good for him. I guess he is a good god. Or was. I'm sorry. Uh, Thank you. So Bahama... Um, so... Uh, whew, this is complicated. As far as I've been able to piece things together, because I've had a lot of time to think, uh, I, again, don't exactly know how long, but um, Bahama after the Celestial Crusade, knew he was going to die. Correct. And laid out plans to protect the world in his absence. Um, did you ever play chess? Yes, but I'm not following your logic. Yeah, it's okay. So chess is a stupid game. Um, hmm. my, my dad really likes 
uh, dominoes. And when there, he couldn't find anyone to sit with me, I had to go hang out with him. And when I got bored watching dominoes, I'd watch people play chess. And people who play chess think they're really smart, uh, but they're not. It's a stupid game because you know where all the pieces are and you have to be polite about it. Uh, if you're about to win, you can't just you know hope someone doesn't notice and win. You have to tell them, hey, I'm about to win and let them take an action. Um, so I guess the one good thing that comes out of that is that the best way to do that isn't to move a piece so you're about to win, um, but to try to move a bunch of pieces so that by the time you're about to win, you've won in all directions. So you, you it's complicated. Basically, you have to, it's called checkmating, and you have to force them into taking a bad action. Seven hours so Bahama just, checkmated. It's just staring at her like, what in the heck are you talking about? Sorry, like I said, had a lot of time to think, was a rat. Bahamut checkmated Asmodeus. How so? Uh, by setting up me and my allies to take a fall. Your allies? Uh, yeah. Master Orem? Orem, Orem. and Randis and uh, Sakar and, um, and Ket, too, I guess. <laughs> um uh, yeah, so basically, I think all the good gods were in on this um, because they probably they were pretty salty, I'm guessing, over some of the stuff that happened during the Celestial Crusade and so didn't feel too bad about um, throwing everyone under the bus considering they're all war criminals. I was bitter for a while about how I got lumped in on that, but, you know, it, it I guess, cost Asmodeus extra resources and time, so I can't I can't blame them too much, uh, even though it really, really, really was unfortunate being a rat. But hey, Bahama came to bail me out, so that's something. How would he bail you out if he's? Dead? I believe her assertion is that our presence here with the gourds is Bahama bailing her out. Yeah, yeah, because Bahama took out a prophecy, so he knew that all of this was going to happen, and so he set uh, his priest. Um, Sarza to, to make sure it happened. She recruited us to be a coalition to recruit other gods in an alliance against Asmodeus uh, because they knew that uh, Ket, you, do you guys, you, do you know Ket too? Anyone? All right. Uh, yeah, Orem didn't speak highly of him. Yeah, that was probably, I mean, honestly, I really did like him, uh, but I should have really, I didn't understand what it means to be. Uh, you know, there's gods aren't really a thing where I'm from. Uh, and so when I heard that he was like sort of marked by the god of, you know, tyranny, I was like, eh? You know, I, I like know some people that are like sort of serving grumpsh and like it doesn't seem to really mess with their everyday lives. And that was not the truth with Ket. So um, anyways, because of Ket and like I guess because of his little imp that followed him around, Asmodeus knew everything we were doing and had known that for like a long time. And so they needed to stop Asmodeus, but they couldn't – if they just told us, you know, hey, Asmodeus is working through you, he'd find someone else. So he couldn't do that. Uh, they had to make Asmodeus act against us once he'd put as much resources into us as possible, uh, like mm. turning me into a rat. Um, and putting Orum in a little crystal. Master and Orum's not, in a crystal? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like a crystal from um, another... It's complicated. But yes, he's in a crystal in Vecna's library, last I knew. Uh, I don't know. The library moves, and I don't know if he's still there or if Asmodeus took him somewhere else. See, this is exactly why I didn't take the deal with Asmodeus. Yeah, that's great. No one should take deals with Asmodeus. It's uh, it's like extremely bad deal from uh, what I'm to understand. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, basically they had us running around trying to recruit gods uh, in an alliance against Asmodeus, and <laughs> Asmodeus realized that uh, we were becoming more trouble than we were worth, and spent a lot of resources to uh to capture and disable us all. And I was the only one that. I don't know. I don't know what happened to anyone else. Um, I got turned into a rat. I, I honestly didn't see what happened to, to Randis, but I, uh, I know Orm's in a crystal and Sakaar is like mind controlled, and I don't know what happened to Cat. It kind of that was the sequence of it. And as soon as there was a rat, I kind of, uh, I guess, ran away. 
Seven yeah. Owls Wise looks over at Albrecht and just kind of gives him a wide eyebrow raise and is like, well, that's quite a story, but you you mentioned Sarsa. Yeah, you know Sarsa I from... I do know her. Not well, but I do know her. Yeah, I, I should have. I'm so... I knew she was holding something back. I knew she was hiding something. I didn't know what until it was too late. Care to elaborate? Well, yeah, that she was, she wanted us to fail. Uh, she said, you know, go forth in the name of Arathis and create this wonderful coalition to create a new uh, treaty amongst the gods. And we like went around and talked to, and I was just like, this is so dumb. Like, it just didn't make any sense why she picked us. Uh, you know, we're not, I'm, I'm a trained diplomat. And I guess to some degree, Ket is, but like the rest of them, you know, they just, the only reason was they'd done the celestial crusade thing before mm. and that was the only reason. It was because they'd done the Celestial Crusade and Asmodeus was invested in them. And uh, and that's why it needed to be them. They were, we were all bait. Mm. Well, you know, he did have some success previously recruiting gods. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So, out of, out of character question then, Rodrigo. Mm-hmm. Uh, are we aware of... Or have are we aware of what has changed or transpired since we were last here on the Astral Sea? No. Are other we, than well, the, other than things being read now, no. Yeah, so uh, we don't know what the state of affairs is. Right. Okay. All right. Mm. Uh, Seven Owls Wise just kind of rubs his eye out of irritation and frustration, trying to take it all in. Mm, this is quite a bit. You know, yeah. I, have you? How did you get here? Oh, uh, I don't know. I've been a rat. Like I said, I'm not sure how long. I just kind of like jumped ship to ship and island to island. And uh, eventually I felt I drawn to, I guess, your gourds. <laughs> That's a bit ominous. Well, they seem to help uh, let me change back. So Interesting. You know anything about any dark pillars? I have no idea. Hmm. Have you looked outside? You've seen the sky is red and... Oh, that's terrible. I bet that's Asmodeus is doing. Well, Asmodeus and Lolth. Oh, yeah, sure. They're in league together. Though, I think the Obsidian Huntress is not actually in league with them. I think she's uh, basically a sleeper agent. So that's something. Uh, how, uh, do you have I'm any... I'm sorry. Thinks he's a sleeper agent. Yeah, I think she's still in line with in in alliance with the, uh, you know, uh, Arathis and Melora and Corlon. What brings you to this conclusion? Uh, because she killed herself to make this happen. Ah, uh, okay. Wait, she uh, killed herself. Well, then she how is she someone... in league with anybody? Huh. Oh, yeah, it's complicated. So she before she was the Obsidian Contrast, she was the Raven Queen, and she was, you know, in an alliance with uh, Bahamut and Arathis. And when Bahamut died, she, uh, or when he knew he was going to die after the Crystal Crusade, she, like, made some weird, I don't know, card game situation with Ket and basically made him kill her um, because there needed to be two gods who two signatories to push put this all in motion um because that's the only plan that, that i think was big enough for asmodeus to like really act uh they needed to force his hand a- and also to be able to kill him that that's what i'm pretty sure is the whole plan it, that's what bahamut actually wants is for us to kill asmodeus uh, won't something take his place sure just like something will eventually take bahamut's place but until then We've got no Bahamut and Asmodeus, and that's got to be bad for the scales of, you know, morality. You realize that your story sounds completely insane. Yeah, and that I've been a rat for a while. So if you don't want to believe me, that's fine. If you don't mind, I'll get off this ship and go, you know, do my thing. Um, uh, I, I guess your I quest didn't is... say that. She saved the Cerulean Keep. She's a hero. Oh, you're cute. I like you. Um, I I wouldn't say saved it. It was just like a quail hit squad. They weren't gonna like blow up your whole keep. But I'll take it. 
yes, I'm a hero. Um, <laughs> I'm normally a lot better at talking to people. It's it's like I said, it's been a while. Seven Owls right. Wise just takes a just tilts up the gourd that and just drinks and drinks and drinks from it for a long bit, and then finally puts it down, and you can tell that the that the container is completely empty. She just, like cocks her head at him in a very weird bird like fashion. And I uh, just and I and he just stares at her for a second. Now, has Seven Owls Wise ever seen a Kenku before? Yes. Okay. Although uh, not there's... this brand of Kenku, but he does recognize a Kenku when he's okay. One. All right. Well, I don't know you. I have mm-hmm. no reason to trust you. Sure. I I am reason to trust her. No one's ever heard of you. But you did mention me. You did mention several names and several situations that make your story sound somewhat believable. Yes, plausible. Mm. Well, thanks. Or I believe you. Thank you. Uh, your uh. Dalen again? D- Dalen, what was your last name? Dalen Green Valley. Dalen Green Valley. At your service, Miss Sparkle. Oh, huh, thanks. Uh, it, and sorry, I, I honestly didn't get the names of the rest of you guys. I stand up, give her a bow. I'm Seven Owls Wise, Wandering Adventure, Veteran of the Celestial Crusade. And what's the, what's the word, Rodrigo? Puissant. Puissant. Puissant Master of the Martial Arts. Do a little quick wave that looks kind of like maybe not as stable as it should be because he just downed that whole flask of uh, of alcohol. Yeah. Wax on, wax off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Albrecht Ghostbeard. I'm a veteran of the Celestial Crusade and one time traveler with Cat. I slap him on his shoulder. And don't forget the hammer-wielding freedom fighter, brother. <laughs> that as well. Uh, well, I guess then the question. Oh, and wait, you. I am Zanam, Tempest of the Lilland Calibus. Tempest of the Lilland Calibus. Zanam will suffice. Little Sparkle has heard the term Lilland Calibus before. I... What what does that mean? Uh, the Lilland Calamus is the organization that uh, opposes Loth, like the Drow organization that oh, opposes Loth. Oh, okay, Loth. yeah, the anti-Drow. Okay, she's mm-hmm. like, ah, I've been honestly wondering why you were trucking around with a uh, dwarf and an Eldrin, but that makes a lot more sense. So cool. Like Master Orem tells us, not all of the non eldrin are bad. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, I'm I'm pretty fond of uh elves i've just never and i've honestly i i've had my life saved by a drow ambassador once so uh i wasn't gonna judge i was just a little it was it was an eclectic group let's just say uh so i guess the question is um thank you for bringing the courts thank bahamut or i guess he's dead sorry that's awkward um but thank you for bringing the gourds and bahamut's foresight for bringing the gourds and what's your plan now find out where we are uh-huh find out what's happened okay find the dark, the dark pillars. pillars okay wait what dark pillars <laughs> that part is still unclear i thought that you were supposed to bring the gourds when the dark pillars showed up i assumed that exactly that was like... yes so then why did you bring the gourds here if the dark pillars hadn't shown up well we're to take them there they could be anywhere at this point Oh, oh, like maybe there's another. Oh, interesting. Wait, so why did you come here right now? Because oh, our ship chose. Because of the even tide. Oh, the ship is. What? Sentient? It's knowing. Yeah. Kind of. As you said, it's complicated. Okay. So, how long have you been on this ship? Months. Yeah, you guys have so- been on this mission for the better part of a year. Nearly a so, year. So Bahamut basically gave you the mission, get on the Actually, ship. Actually, no. I'm sorry. You guys have been on this mission for more than a year. More than so a year. So it's been like a year and six months, about. Now how long have we been with the ship, specifically? Uh, with the ship? Uh, probably. Actually, not very long. You yeah. Basically, once you guys got the ship, 
um, you had a couple more here. adventures and then you headed over. Yeah. How long did we chase the ship? <laughs> yeah. That's a good question. <laughs> also a long story. So basically you just like let the ship take you around? Mm. We try to guide it. We give her suggestions. Huh. Well. She sometimes listens to them. <laughs> All right, then. How did I get on this ship, Rodrigo? Did I get, like, from, was I on the island? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, I was on, I guess, the island, I think. And you it's know a little this, vague. You know this island, this uh, Lion <laughs> I Fang know island? Rat. I couldn't say. I have no idea where I am. I'm sorry. I uh, um. Do you know, do you know where we are? Lion Fang Island. That's yes. Yeah. Never heard of it. <laughs> well. Nor have we. All right. Well, um, do you? <sighs> I'm sorry to be in this position, but I have absolutely no money and would love. Uh, I lost all my gear. Um, so. Is there any chance I could come with you ashore, try to get, like, I don't know, a dagger and some armor and uh, figure out what's going on? Kind of. We kind of look at, at each other. Seven owls wise and cocks an eyebrow. And I'm like, why don't you wait here just a moment? <sighs> okay. Yeah. Get that's up fair. and all, all four of us usher out into the outside in the uh, area of the uh, galley, close the door. What do you think? Sounds like a wild tale. Someone this enchanted like with a... dark magics, creepy magics, and he looks at Dolan. <laughs> Dolan grins. But she's a hero. Sounds like You're the trap. only reason why I'm giving this even a half of a consideration. Mm. The tale on its face seems ludicrous. But as did all of Master Orm's tales as did the story of how each of us came to travel on the ship and to travel together. Can't dispute that. Still. Do we enlist her in our quest? Seems like I the believe. two might be interconnected if Sarsa and I were both put on a path. She knows Sarsa. She says she Could knows she Orem. Take us to If Sarsa? we presume... Dallin if we presume this Sparkle story is true, she's already part of our quest. Perhaps. That's a big presumption. Who's in favor of allowing her to be part of us? I mean... Provisional. Yeah? Ghost Beard kind of grumpily folds his arms. I got my arms akimbo, you know, on my on my hips and just look at, at Albrecht. Then I look at Zemon. And then I, then I looked over at Dallin. I don't trust her. Hmm. But I think keeping an eye on her may be the wisest course of action. As much as she talks, it's probably a good idea to keep an eye on her. We don't know what she's going to be telling everyone. Do we arm her? I look at Dallin. I'd say yes. She's a hero. <sighs> she helped save the Cerulean Keep. And if anything she says is true, we need to help save Master Orem. We need to get the gourds to the pillar. Yes. But first we need to find the pillars. First, the Which pillars she might be here. able to help us. Mm -hmm. And if she was brought here by some sort of divine intervention, and it if would the ship, us. And if the ship brought us here. Yes, but which divine intervention? Mm. Well, I don't think the Eventide would bring us here if this was not a good idea. Possibly. <laughs> All right. Trust the ship. Very well. And Seven Owls Wise goes up to the door and just kind of not, you know, doesn't kick the door open hard, but like, you know, slides the door open with his foot mm -hmm. and still she's, walks in. She's gone. She's gone? Yep. Drumstick? You can hear drumsticks boys down the hallway. Oh, run down the hallway. Okay. Uh, so uh, you run down the hallway and go into the room where you hear drumsticks voice. Uh, it is, in fact, the armory. 
It's a very large room with uh, all kinds of stuff on the walls and dummies with, like, armor on them, weapon racks. There's, like, halberds and swords and stuff. And uh, Drumstick is just uh, sitting there on top of a table that has a bunch of knives on it. Um, little Sparkle uh, has uh, half gotten some uh, leather armor on and drumsticks just like, well, what about these daggers? They've got that little ring on the back so you can hook them into something else. Ooh, Seven hours like come that. sliding in. How did you get past us? Oh, I took around the back. <sighs> well, you found the armory. We were going to bring you here anyway. Oh, yeah, sorry. The, you're, I assume you're talking wait drumstick you your name is drumstick that seems like a really inappropriate name are you gonna eat her <laughs> about why it. would we eat her well, drumstick is like you know a thing you eat like i don't eat it but i know people who do maybe as a last resort <laughs> yeah that's messed up so anyway she like shrugs all the way into the leather armor. Uh, yeah, yeah it fits. that fits pretty well. Thanks. Anyway, we think our missions are intertwined. Correct. And we think that we should stick together for a while. And if our mission is the one true mission, as is always the case with Bahamut, you are here for a purpose. And I think we should work together to find the dark pillars and take the order eater gourds to them. What? Is, what? So order eater gourds. Uh, I mean, I get I, they're clearly a source of extremely powerful chaotic magic. Uh, do you know what they do? Well, I do a number of things. They have names. I mean, do we really know what they do, Rodrigo? I mean, we know what their names are. You know, know what their what name you done. you've you've had at least one harrowing adventure each caused yes. by those gourds, so mm-hmm. cool. yeah. you know, uh spread poison and all sorts of uh, nasty, transmit dreams into your mind and show us visions of the future. <sighs> yeah, that's weird. Yeah, so she, like, if, if we basically take, does like knife tricks with her hands, like ah, it feels so good to have hands again. I mean, I guess I kind of had hands, but like hands that function and can hold a knife. Oh, man, that feels good. Seven Owls is just kind of looking at her all squinty as she's doing all this, like trying to follow the motions, measuring her up, looking for a weak spot. <laughs> uh, all right. Yeah, that sounds sounds great. Um, none of you are working with Asmodeus or I don't know. <laughs> no. Cool. All right, no. and none of you are like are war criminals from the Celestial Crusade because I really don't want to get like sold out and turned into a rat again. I look at Zimmon. Why are you looking at me? Are you a war criminal? Not in as far as I'm going to tell you. Are you a war criminal? I say to Dallin. Not a no. War and if I was, nobody would remember that anyways. Albrecht? <laughs> <sighs> Again, I'm not exactly a war criminal, but you know my history. And as I am not either, as a follower of Bahamut. So, No. Are you? <laughs> uh, by association, maybe. I don't know. It's complicated, I guess. I wasn't in the Celestial Crusade, but I apparently hung out with a bunch of people that didn't make much friends there. Um, well, if a guilt by association is enough, then maybe we are. Hmm. Hmm. Well. It's like a I rash. Was... <laughs> <laughs> I just give what? Drumstick this what? look. Where are you? are you from the Feywild? A little scratch under the chin. Yeah. So, like talking foxes are just a thing there. All talking, everything. most animals talk in the Feywild. 
right, man, so I was only good. there for a very short amount of time. Uh, all right, let's get off this boat, if that's okay, then, and I can try to get us some information on we where are, we are. We are headed to the tavern before Great. you appeared. Ah, oh, tavern sounds so nice. I'm gonna drink. Drumstick. Do the guard the ship. We're going to the tavern. Uh, I'll come get you if your gourds start acting weird again. Thank you. Good idea. The gourds seem back to normal. Yep. Or as they're just kind as of can be. mumbling to each other. You were talking to them. Cantaloupe. Cantaloupe. Hmm? You were talking to them. To the gourds? Yes. Sure. And what did they say? Do you want to know? Probably. As it pertains to you, yes. All right, I wasn't actually talking to the gourds. Uh, uh, all right, I guess I should be honest because I yelled at like Sakar for holding this back. Um, so I'm technically, I guess, now a were rat. Um, and this is the first time I've been able to turn from a rat back into a person. I don't know if now I'll start actually doing other lycanthropy stuff. Um, it's a weird strain of lycanthropy, specially developed just for me by Asmodeus. So, uh, yeah, I guess, yeah. So, um, I was talking to other were rats who helped me find this place. Well, actually, I just found this place. They just kind of told me that I should come here. Now, Seven Owl's other eye is cocked, and he's squinting at her with the other eye. <sighs> So much to learn. So much to talk about. First, though, drink. Oh, yeah, that sounds really good. <laughs> and I think that's where we'll end it right there. Okay. This week's episode of Critical Hit. Oh, my gosh. So many adventures leading up to this. I know. You're probably stories scratching upon your... Stories upon stories upon stories. Oh, lots of stories to be told, I'm sure. <sighs> uh, but uh, not in this episode. <laughs> Let's find <laughs> what awaits us on Lion, Lion Fang Island next time. Let's see if we can trust this uh, this bird person, this Kinku. We can trust her. She's a hero. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just keep saying that over and over again. It'll never not be funny. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, until next time, here's hoping all of your dice rolls are critical hits. This podcast is copyright 2019 by Major Spoilers Entertainment, LLC.